Hey roadies, this is Adriana from Roadie Free Radio, and this episode Larry talks to Laura Davis, drummer from the New York punk band Student Teachers and author of The Girl in the Back, a female's drummer's life with Bowie, Blondie, and the 70s rock scene. In this short clip, Laura talks about how Bowie's death motivated her to write her book and how it all came very naturally, with some points being painful but cathartic. If you want to hear more about Laura and her book, make sure to check out the full episode number 129 from April 1st, 2019. Thank you for listening, and thank you for subbing. Here are Larry and Laura. When this all came about, I never wanted to write this book. Mm. I actually had been asked a couple of times over the years to write this. Um, but I had said no because I'm I, – ironically – I don't know if ironically is the right word here, but um, I'm a very private person. Mm. And um, um, But anyway, so um, – but then I woke up one day and uh, David Bowie had died and I was, you know, as we all were, I was just like, you know, ugh, totally – I was – in one way, I was surprised how shocked I was, how, you know, devastated I felt. Mm. But in another way, I thought, well, that makes sense um, because he, as I go into in the book, had been pretty instrumental in – uh, I don't want to say giving me permission to do what I wanted to do in life, but that's kind of what happened. Yeah. And um, so I, I don't know. I, I had written, so I got up and I was just like ugh, throughout the whole day and I wrote this essay about, uh, which I might've, t- I don't know, mentioned somewhere yeah. um, uh, about Bowie called mortality and the man who fell to earth. And that was published on the, my partially examined life place where my podcast is and um and my agent saw it and uh <laughs> hold on one second lucas <laughs> and my agent saw it and um he started bugging me to write the book and um i was like uh, i don't know i don't know but then uh, you know the, the bowie i, I kind of felt like i was i had to write it Okay. And, um, um, so in terms of the process that you're referring to or is, um, I ended up emailing and talking a lot with the people in my band because we had reconnected recently, um, because, um, a CD of our, all our songs came out in 2014 and, um, and so we had come reconnected and had dinner and, you know, after all these years. And um, so I started emailing them and, you know, but, I, I, you know, I, re- I remembered a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, even though, I mean, the, when you're all teenage, when you're a teenager, it's kind of really huge, the experiences you have. Yeah. Because it's the first time in your life where you're, where you're breaking the umbilical cord, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're moving and you're, you're experiencing life without mom and dad there, you know? So the, the, those experiences, the animal are very virginal. They're very, uh, um, um, primary and a primal. And so it's not hard to remember a lot of those, um, because of the, um, how profound it is. Mm -hmm. So, that's one thing. So that, as I was writing, a lot of that was coming back. It came back very fast. I mean, I think I wrote the book in three months. Wow. Because it came back very fast. And um, but and then I was talking with everybody in the band, and then I came in, and I know, I, as you may recall, there are a lot of footnotes mm-hmm. um, where I um, cite what they remember as well, mm-hmm. because you know, memory is like that. Yeah. It's extremely faulty. What yeah. you remember and what your sister remembers could be night and day. Totally. You know? Yeah. Even though you had lived the same life. I mean, you were right. living with whatever. And so um, that was a big problem. And um, in fact, we got into some arguments <laughs> about it, about what I decided to write about and what they felt shouldn't be there because they didn't they remembered it differently so i footnoted them as much as possible to give them their voice yeah. as much as i could but anyway that's one thing but yeah i mean it, it, in terms of the writing of the scenes where it's very sort of brings you into the moment that is um a, 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 i mean 
I want to say that is a technique. Sure. It is. But it came very naturally. Was it painful? Was it was it was it a painful process for you writing this book? Certain points of it were. Yeah. 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 Um, particularly when I talk about um the problems with Jimmy. Yeah. Um were very painful. Um and um but at the same time, cathartic, which may go to the value of journal writing. Mm. Um, it depends on who you are. I don't know. I'm a terrible person <laughs> about – in terms of at the end of a day, day's over. I don't want to remember the day. I don't want to – whatever it is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean I'm not – one. I mean journal – when you journal write, it's you're, you're involving a lot of reflection – and and it's very important and it's very good and get, can, and you can grow from it and learn a lot and I'm very pro it but I can't seem to do it myself. As I say, the writing of this book when I was writing it, um, it was very cathartic and it probably helped me work through a lot of stuff that I never had dealt with in right. my life. Sure. Particularly the stuff with Jimmy, um, which obviously leaves a legacy emotionally. Um, when something like that happens to you at a, such a young age. Um, but again, there was a lot, like I said, there was a lot of drugs and, and that distorted a lot of things as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but anyway, in terms of those scenes where I, it kind of brings you into the moment, it became very naturally to me. I wasn't really thinking of it as a strategy. Yeah. I was really thinking it came very naturally to me to write like how I was, when I was looking at like my discussion about Paul Rettner, you know, the drummer of the mumps who I had a, a short affair with then. And it came very naturally to write about seeing him. And I just, it was just, it just made a lot of sense. I don't know why it came that way, but it did. Yeah. yeah. I really, and I appreciated too that, um, that you included the voices of your band members a lot. And I appreciated the ending where they all get to sort of chime in and then you give a short thing about where they are. Um, and it wasn't lost on me that Jimmy's the last one. And he's just a small little sort of footnote in there. Um, and, but, but it was really cool, you know, because it could have just been about you and your experience and talking about the band, but along the way, they all sort of chime in, um, in, in funny ways about, right. like you said, your recollection or their recollection of things. And I just thought that was cool that you gave space for that to be there. Well, I mean, it, it, my experience wouldn't have happened if not for them. Right. If we didn't have the band, Yeah. you know, my, my, I wouldn't have met Jimmy. I wouldn't have met Debbie. I wouldn't have gone dealt with been involved with Blondie and met Bowie. Yeah. So I could, I mean, it, it was very, um, seem very organically sure. tied. So I, I, that's why it was important to give them space. Hey, what's happening, roadies? It's Larry here. Just wanted to thank you so much for listening to this short clip. I really hope you got something out of it. If you can take two seconds to head over to iTunes and drop us a review or a comment, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Keep listening. Keep coming back. Stay healthy out there. And remember, no roadies, no rock and roll.